The Enermax Liquitec TR42 all-in-one liquid CPU cooler has a massive contact plate made just for Threadripper and is rated for 500 watts of heat dissipation. High pressure PWM fans mount to rubber channels on the radiator to absorb vibration and the sexy logo and edge lighting on the block is addressable for syncing with your motherboard. It comes with an RGB control box too, so click the sponsor link in the description for more. What's up guys, how's it going? And welcome back to Paul's Hardware. I have been very busy over the past uh, month, month and a half. And as a result, I have neglected Riptide. Riptide is the build that I did this summer. It was the most expansive and crazy water cooling build that I have yet put together. It all started when Corsair sort of accidentally sent me the 1000D case. And they were like, hey Paul, we sent you this case. You think you could do a video on it? And I was like, well, it's already here and it's huge. I don't know what else I'm gonna do with it. So yes, then it evolved into me creating an upper system that is a workstation, also gaming capable, station and a lower system that is a free NAS build and I documented all this in a build series over the summer so feel free to check out the playlist if you want to watch that process and get yourself up to speed. Most recently I did a lighting test on this where I demonstrated some of the capabilities of the Corsair IQ lighting software and in that video I also revealed that one of my two pumps has failed. So today I am going to be upgrading this system, swapping out a couple parts that aren't working anymore. I also had this processor just arrived. This is the 2970WX. I did not tell them to send this. They just sent it and it's here. It's 24 core so it's an upgrade from the 16 core 2950X that's currently in there. Both are Threadripper 2 of course and then I am planning a follow-up video to this because I need to integrate this into my computer room and I need to build a stand for it so that's coming in the future too. But elsewise in today's video I will be swapping in of course new Alpha Cool replacement pump. They actually sent me a full replacement pump as well as just the pump unit itself that slots into there so I guess I've got options there. We also have uh, and this was all purchased directly from Newegg, which is why it's in a Newegg box. I spent like $1,200 on SSD storage for this build specifically. We have two one terabyte Samsung 970 Evos uh, for some really high speed M.2 NVMe storage. And then we've got a couple a SanDisk Ultra two terabyte drives because there's really no space for me to add mechanical drives to this upper system. And it's supposed to be a video editing system. So I need plenty of storage space for some 4K footage. So these are probably go, gonna go into RAID 1 so that they're gonna back each other up and I have a bit of redundancy. And these are gonna go into RAID 0, so I'll have two terabytes of fast, but um, a little bit of dangerous storage there. And I'll have four terabytes, well, two terabytes effectively of redundant storage in these two drives. Finally, I also have an upgraded monoblock because as I mentioned when I first put the system together, AlphaCool makes a very nice CPU block, but Threadripper is a larger CPU. It has four Ryzen dies in there. So making a block that's specifically designed for that tends to work a little bit better. So to that end, I have an EK X399 gaming RGB monoblock. So this is a monoblock for the full motherboard. It's gonna also cover the VRMs and keep those cooler. So I'll be integrating this as well. The last thing I wanted to point out before I get into this is that this was kind of what this system was designed for. This is a water-cooled system. Water-cooled systems, especially custom water-cooled systems, are notorious for being difficult to work with and upgrade. My whole goal with this system, which I did by including quick disconnects wherever I could, was to make sure that the water cooling loop could be disassembled and pull out of there. And even if I wanted to do something as crazy as swapping the motherboard out or adding a monoblock, I could do that, hopefully without too much trouble. And today's video is probably either gonna be a proof of that concept or proof that no matter what you do with a custom water-cooled system like this, it's gonna be a challenge either way. So when it comes to taking apart my loop, I think I've decided how I wanna go about doing this. So quick disconnects are pretty much everywhere there is a connection point. So from here to here, there's a quick disconnect there. Down here, there's one there, one here, one up here, and so on. So, so I think I can leave my radiators in place and leave them full of liquid too by just using the quick disconnects for that to remove the parts down here. And then I'll see if I'm gonna to need to drain. I probably will drain these separately after I get those pieces pulled out.
So I was pulling apart these reservoirs because I had noticed, and Joe also noticed, there's a few spots on them that had appeared since they're all white. I was rubbing on those to see if that would come off, and it seems like it does. There's also, though, it seems like maybe some rough spots on these, uh, these little things here and there. So as I'm feeling them, some of the rough patches seem like they might be a little bit more inclined to pick up residue, like the, right here actually is a good example of that. There is some buildup, and that appears to be like the plastic itself is kind of rough right here, so I think that's why that buildup occurred. This is the pieces of one of the original cold cathodes that goes in the center of these and lights it up. I haven't had these installed because I broke one of them when I did the initial installation. Broke another one of them just now. They are quite delicate. That didn't concern me too bad because fortunately Alpha Cool did send me some replacements for these after I broke that first one. So uh, hopefully I can use this, drop it back down in there. And these uh, aren't supposed to just be for lighting though, since it's also UV, it's also supposed to potentially kill any biological growth in the liquid too. So this might actually potentially help from getting buildup on my little helixes. So now that I've done this once, I think I can present you with a master class on how to replace a cold cathode in one of these Alpha Cool Helix reservoirs. It drops down in there just like that, uh, but bear in mind if you're replacing one, you will need to retrieve the little nubby that came with the original, because the replacement doesn't come with that. I'm just going to feed this on the end. Bear in mind there's a little extra wire that goes down the entire length of the cathode tube. You do not want to break that. It is delicate, so be careful. Now we have our cap. Cap's in two pieces. There's actually a center unit there and there's an O-ring just beneath that, so make sure both of those are in place. Take your helix, of course, and drop it down in the center. Then we can take this cap, put it back on top. Push it down a little bit, it'll cause the outer sleeve to catch on the threading on the reservoir itself. And then by screwing that down, it will actually sync these up, push that O-ring into place, get yourself a nice water seal there. I do need to rotate this so it will line up where I want it to be in the actual build. And I'm just gonna tighten that down good and tight. Take my cathode, drop it down the middle, and then uh, just using a little dowel to kind of push that into place. Ta-da! As I'm working on this upgrade, I have another box arrive, and it is also from AMD, and I have no idea what it is, because usually I respond to AMD and say, yes, send this over or that over, or whatever they want to send, but I've just, I just haven't this time, purely because I've been so busy this past week. But they're sending me stuff anyway, so you guys get to find out what it is along with me. Hey, there it is. That was a large box for a single processor. Well, there it is. Uh, this is the 2920X. I have no immediate use for this, but thank you AMD for sending this over. Uh, this is the 12 core version, so this is the lowest end processor you can get uh, when it comes to Threadripper 2. That's all I really have to say about it for now. Uh, let's, let's move on.
things are actually moving along pretty steadily now, and the thing I was most happy with was the removal of the motherboard. I don't know if you guys saw that in the time lapse, but just taking the graphics cards out all as one unit, removing this uh, whole pump and reservoir assembly, allowed me to easily get at the motherboard, pull that out of there, get the block installed, plug everything back in, reinstall it. I also really like that the uh, DIM.2 slot that's available on the motherboard just allows you to take the M.2 drives, put them in that little adapter, and then slot it right in. It's in a very convenient place up here, and it's not blocked by any of these uh, graphics cards down here, so that's cool too. Beyond that, I wanted to give a test of my newly assembled pump reservoir combos here, so I reassembled that, looped it in with itself, and then this is actually an AC adapter that was sent by a fan to Awesome Hardware, to our PO box, actually sent to Kyle's PO box. Just a little AC adapter with a Molex plug and a button, so that allows me to really easily test these pumps turn them on and off, and fortunately we have no leaks appearing thus far. So I think I'm really quickly gonna test those cold cathodes as well, and then we'll drop this back in too. Oh, shit. thanks, Joe. Sorry. After all my warnings, I completely. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna need to air dry it. So now, because that happens, I cannot do a test boot. I just had a major brain fart again. <laughs> just flinging water everywhere. So all that was left, one last little piece to connect from the monoblock up to here. The monoblock is positioned a little bit differently when it comes to my connectors there. So I was trying to get the tubing lengths to be the right length to look okay and everything. I had it like functional in there, but I was trying to cut this a little shorter. And then I wanted to measure the length of this and get an idea of how short it would be to go from here to here. And I forgot that the top radiator is completely full of liquid still. So when I connected the connector, it started to drain out. And now we have some liquid back there between the graphics cards and the motherboard. So I'm gonna need to pull these GPUs out, dry it off as much as I can, let it sit at least overnight, depending on how much water is back there. And I'm going to have to come back to you guys in just a minute. It'll be just a minute for you guys, but it'll be tomorrow for me uh, and actually get hopefully a test boot on this thing. Ah, that was so stupid. I was warning Joe about that happening earlier, and then I completely blanked on it potentially happening just now. Ah, that's right. All right, pulling the graphics cards back up. It's been a long day. It has. <laughs> Transition. All right, guys, it is now two days from the last shot where I tragically spilled water inside here, and I've just been waiting for stuff to dry out. I think everything is good to go now. Graphics cards there have had plenty of time, and internally now I just have a couple things really left to do. I'm gonna use some barrel extenders here to provide a little bit of extension for the monoblock to give me a little bit more flexibility with where these tubes are going. Need to... Apparently this one hasn't tried out completely. I need to cut this one a little bit shorter uh, in order to make that a little bit smoother up there. Honestly, I'm just so close to being done. Uh, and then of course the last thing is gonna be some wiring up in the back, hooking up my uh, little UV cold cathodes in there, and then of course uh, getting the SSDs all wired up. And then it should be finished. I can fire this up and make sure everything is hopefully still working. That said though, I have plenty of paper towels here, so. <laughs> I'm going to once again get into the risky phase of trying to work with these tubes and hopefully not lose too much fluid along the way.
All right, guys, the system has been reassembled. I was about to power it all on, and then I realized, you know what? Always be safe rather than be sorry. So let's do some pump testing and see if we can figure out if there are any leaks going on. Also, I will probably need to be topping off these pumps as they are filling with air pretty quickly. It does seem to have enough fluid in it. So that's good for now. All right, I'm gonna leave this running for just a minute or two, top it off, and then I'll cycle through, check the second one too. All right, the CPU loop is looking good. So I'm gonna switch over and try the GPU loop. Here goes to the GPU loop. Yay. We have liquid flow. This one doesn't have as much air to work out of the loop either because it didn't drain these front rads very much. All right, so again, just gonna let this run for a few minutes, double check for leaks, and then I can do a re-power back on and hopefully everything I installed is functional. All right, guys, I think it is about time to do an actual test boot on this system. Upgraded, all the new parts integrated. Looks like we got power. I sure hope I rewired the power button up properly. I sure hope there are no leaks. I sure hope, well, shoot. I don't think the power button is wired up properly. Well, shoot, <laughs> that's inconvenient. All right, I'll have to worry about that later. For now, we'll use the surface mounted power button. This is promising initially, both pumps working. Oh, look at that, excellent progress. Beautiful. This is your pretty common, just swaps the CPU message, new CPU installed, and uh, oh, it's also giving me a fan speed error because nothing's plugged into the fan header. Processors recognized, 2970WX24 core processor uh, when it comes to onboard devices. Under SATA configuration, I can see both of my Corsair Force LE 480 gig SSDs, as well as the two SanDisk two terabyte, so that's good too. And finally here under boot devices, I can see my two Samsung 970 Evos also being recognized. That is fantastic. All right, guys, that is gonna pretty much wrap it up for this video. I have the system back up and running. I don't appear to have any leaks. Fingers crossed on that. Of course, I'm gonna keep a close eye on it for the time being. And I have rebooted into Windows and the IQ software is loaded back up. I still need to synchronize the ASUS software with the Corsair software to get all the colors matching, but functionally everything's working. And I would say that given all of the stuff that I did in this video to this system, including swapping in a CPU, swapping in a water cooling monoblock, swapping out a busted pump, adding in the SSD storage that I did, and the fact that this is a very complex system with lots of moving parts in it, I don't think it was all that difficult, relatively speaking, of course. Uh, let me know what you guys think. If you think it's worth it to build a system like this with all the complexity involved, I, of course, will be following up with more because I need to build a computer off-floor stand for this to go on in the computer room. And then, of course, I am planning on using this system still, so I do plan to follow up once I get it integrated into my workflow and into my computer room and show you guys some of the performance, especially with the upgraded CPU. Kind of curious how that's gonna work, especially when it comes to gaming. But that's gonna wrap it up for this video, guys. I really hope you enjoyed it. Hit the thumbs up button if you did. I'll put links to as much of this stuff as possible in the description down below. And uh, while you're down there, consider subscribing too so you can see my follow-up videos on this as well as lots of other videos coming at you real soon. Thanks again for watching, guys, and we'll see you next time.